Hey guys, Kildare here, and normally in this series we look at quotes from the book The Art of War by Sun Tzu and apply said quotes to MOBAs and PvP in general. However, today we'll be deviating away from that. Although The Art of War is an excellent book and has aged very, very well, to say that you can get all the knowledge you need about warfare from it, particularly online PvP, would be absurd. With that said, let's move on to today's burning question. Brains or brawn? Which is more powerful in online PvP? Now naturally, when I say brawn, I speak of strength of your character, hero, or champion, and not how well we can all tear a foam book in half. The brawn I speak of is which hero would win in a matchup against another hero, not taking into account any fancy strategies, just two heroes step in, do their moves and stuff, and one steps out. All or most heroes have a counter of some sort. For example, Zeratul excels at destroying Li Ming, and Nova excels at annihilating Kel'Thas. So with Brawn alone, we can see what kills what when they face each other and slap away. However, let's now take Brawn away by having two of the exact same heroes on each other. Since the two heroes are the same without any external influence, they should be perfectly matched. This is where strategy comes in. Two heroes that are evenly matched. Let's say two Janas versus each other. Now let's add strategy to the equation. Two Janas with two different people controlling them. Now it comes down to who does more research than the other. Who has put more thought and wisdom into their choices to make sure they get victory. In this situation where the two participants are evenly matched in brawn, the one with better strategy or brains will win, and vice versa. Thanks to some people favoring brawn and others favoring brains, we can have countless and endless possibilities. We can even have a hero that should be getting decimated by their counter win a situation and even counter the counter. So now we get what I mean when I say brains versus brawn in the online PvP community rather than reality where it would be a little different. So now we know this, which one is better? It's a bit of an age old question as people can see how either side could win. Brawn can win because it can just overpower brains and destroy it before its grand strategy can even come into play. And Brains can work because if Brawn does not put any effort into thinking about its actions and consequences, then Brains can just outwit the enemy and beat them. Hell, even turn Brawn's greatest power, being strength, against it. Most people would probably assume the answer would be Brains, because, well, the stereotype of a MOBA player and PvPers in general are nerdy and generally not bodybuilders in reality. And to a degree, this is correct. Playing intense online games requires a lot of thought, extremely good complex problem solving skills, and even the ability to switch between tasks that have conflicting requests. It takes a lot of brain power to be good at PvP and intense games in general. So the debate could just end here, but this is not true. Let's take a look at the other end of the spectrum. If there are any old school World of Warcraft players out there, you may remember Wrath of the Lich King, arguably one of the best expansions for World of Warcraft. With the release of Wrath, a new class was unveiled, the Death Knights. Any of those old school WoW players probably know where I'm going with this. Upon release, there was a Death Knight spree for two reasons. Number one, they were the new, epically, awesomely fun class that is legendary in the lore of Warcraft, and you get to play one in WoW. And two, they were insanely overpowered. No, seriously, it was crazy. Death Knights were gods in comparison to other classes. They stomped all over everyone and broke some of the game mechanics along the way. They were so powerful that they could just do an instance with five Death Knights. Normally, you would need three DPS, one healer, one tank, and a bit of a variety from every class and aspect of the game, but Death Knights were so overpowered they could ignore the rules of PvE. Five Death Knights could pretty much do any instance. And all they would have to do is rotate tanks, and their passive heals were good enough to keep them alive. But that's just PvE. What about PvP? Well then... 
To say it broke the game would be a understatement. Who would have known that a melee tank with pets, self heals, high damage, multiple silences, gap closer, damage reduction shield, magic reduction AoE, magic immunity shield, and when they die, they come back to life with timed life. Who would have thought this would destroy PvE in PvE? Needless to say, no matter how good you were, how much gear or brawn you had on you, or how much time you spent investing on a strategy to counter a Death Knight, they would win, hands down. Granted, it was possible to kill them from time to time if you had an army, but 9 times out of 10 they would crush you, no matter what class you were or what gear you had. This was a good example of when balancing was not implemented very well. This is an example of when you give a character excessive brawn, there is no stopping them, no matter how much intellect you have at your disposal. So that clears it, brawn wins it would seem, however I have one more example up my sleeve. This time occurring in Heroes of the Storm, more specifically the North American Spring Regionals which happened recently. Heroes of the Storm is arguably balanced, but we are dealing with MLG players here, so for the sake of my argument, Heroes is balanced. The game I want to focus on is match 1 of Tempo Storm vs Panda Global, which was a riveting round by the way, I would recommend you go see it, however I will be giving away the ending in this video. If you watched the game, you would have noticed that Tempo Storm were not doing very well in teamfights, and sometimes objectives. Normally they would lose teamfights, and the enemy team, being Panda Global, would just simply be better, and had the better team composition for full-blown fights. They had better crowd control, they had better damage, and had very good sustain. With that said, at the end of the game, Tempo Storm got a total of 5 kills, while Panda Global had 7. So from this, it looks like Panda Global will win. They have the better team fighting team composition, and they have more kills, and they are dominating Tempo Storm in nearly all aspects. Victory is assured, right? Wrong. Tempo Storm won. But how? Clearly the odds were against them. Most encounters they lost. Well, let's have a look at the game. Despite Tempo Storm losing most encounters and had less kills than Panda Global, they did have one thing working for them. Objectives. At the end of the game, Global Panda had taken a total of two forts. Tempo Storm, on the other hand, had taken four, giving them an overall lane advantage and more territory to fight on. This match was a great example of not only brains versus brawn, but also direct and indirect tactics. At some stage in the game, Tempo Storm realized they could not win fights. The enemy team composition was too strong. So one could give up and surrender at this stage, however they decided to use indirect tactics instead. Rather than winning team fights, all they had to do was stall. Tempo Storm would intentionally get mercenary camps when the objective was about to spawn. Once they got the mercenaries, they would force a fight and stall for as long as possible. They might not win the fight, but the fight served as a distraction from the camps. The enemy team would have to choose between winning the team fight but losing forts, or protecting forts and losing the objective. It was a very good tactic by Tempo Storm, and the winning move was also a dangerous one. Joanna was ganked by Panda Global, the entire enemy team was on her and at the other side of the map. At this time, Tempo Storm knew this was the moment they could end the game. Joanna distracted all of the enemy team and stayed alive for as long as possible while Tempo Storm dived for the core. By the time they either killed Joanna or realized it was too late. As they all hearsed back to save the core, Zeratul void prisoned the entrance and secured victory for Tempo Storm. It was an amazing game, and no one saw this coming, and was a fine example of when you are losing in brawn, you can still win thanks to your brain. It was also an amazing display of direct and indirect tactics at its finest. So now we've reached the point where I have shown both the pros and cons for both sides of the spectrum, so where does it leave the question? Some people would say the answer is 50-50, have a perfect balance of both, but I argue that this is also incorrect. After all, I said before, online gamers and PvPers require more mental strength than the average person to perform well in said games. The answer I say is equilibrium. Now one can assume that Equilibrium is the same as 50-50, but this is incorrect. 
Equilibrium is defined as a state of rest of balance due to the actions of an opposing force and equal balance between any powers. In other words, you will need a bit of both ends and not fully devoted to just one side. Just like the old saying goes, too much of anything is bad for you, too little of anything can also be bad for you. It's up to each individual person to find the right equ equilibrium that works for them. But at the end of the day, you will need both, and it's up to you how much of both resources you will use, need, and or require. As said by the definition of equilibrium, the balance is caused by the actions of the opposing force. So if the enemy has a lot of brawn, and your team does not, you need to make up for it with strategy and accept that you can't beat them with strength alone. This also applies the other way around. If you have a lot of strength, but the enemy team is outperforming you, then you need to rely less on your strength alone and put some strategy into your actions. And there you have it. At the end of the day, there is no one perfect universal answer, but at least we can understand that what we need for each fight is determined by the choices of the enemy and knowing it. Well guys, thanks for watching. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight. Like the video if it helped you, leave a comment on what you think is the right balance, and if you really like me rambling, then feel free to subscribe. Every now and then I have a poll to let you guys decide what you would like to see next. Have a good one.